Okay, so uh, welcome and good morning to one and all, dear viewers. I am Vaibhav Vagrawal from Common Dev, and today we have our guest, Madam Avni Dalal, who is the co-founder of Sparker Change Foundation and a trustee. She is an electronic uh, engineer, a graphic designer, an animator, and a passionate social worker who is currently mentoring two hundred children at Sparker Change Foundation. So we welcome you, ma'am. We are glad to have you here with us, and it's a pleasure interviewing you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So, ma'am, my first question is: What motivated you to, you know, come up with Sparker Change Foundation, or what was that moment that initiated such a concept? Like, I should begin with such an organization for a social cause. So, um, in two thousand fifteen, a little before that, uh, Nirmala Venkatesan, founder trustee, and uh, me, we got we kind of got off on an informal basis. and uh, you know we realized that uh, uh, we share the same perspective of leaving behind the society for our children and uh, we wanted that society to be inclusive of uh, children and youth and peers across all uh, levels in society classes in society and and so we thought and we thought education is the only way to kind of uh, a uh, stream in a similar pattern of thoughts uh, across the strata and this thought process this passion to uh, get all the children come uh, the youth come on board as one uh, is what was the primary reason you know where we started off uh, which gave birth to spark a change foundation in 2015 you know we wanted to prove that uh that you know a driver's son need not be a driver or maybe you know a maid's daughter may need not be just a maid they they have aspirations and they have dreams and if pushed and given the right direction i think they can bloom to be much more than just maybe a house help or uh, uh, you know maybe they can be at par with any other privileged individual so yeah that, that was a basic the basic Uh, core thought of uh, giving birth to Sparker Change Foundation. Yeah. So Sparker Change Foundation, as we have read on the website, it works for you know it works in the direction so that the inequality in education comes to an end. So Correct. for the same cause, ma'am, how have been your activities at Sparker Change Foundation, and uh, you know how have been your activities, your work? It has. how has it been in the direction of the same social cause how has sparker change foundation contributed to bring down the level of inequality in education so inequality in education starts when um, when you have you know across the classes you have uh, one is uh, class bias gender bias um, and uh, the opportunities available across the strata because it, it, it is a huge gap i mean even when we say lower middle class low class income low income uh, group but there is a huge difference in thought process availability of opportunities um the um the access that can be uh, given to a child uh, of a privileged class is more is actually expensive it's not something which in a low low income group child can you know easily get so what spark change foundation does is we initially try and in their primary years a uh, gap bridge the gap of learning which they has called which you know which they have gone through and uh, as they grow and they get into the secondary years we start giving them a holistic development of say exposing them to things like trinity speech and drama uh, computer courses which become uh, mandatory at our place after grade 10 you have to do a certain amount of computer courses which are government uh, supported which are uh, needed for commerce students uh, which science students or computer science students that we have now uh, children wanting to be computer science engineers i mean so there are courses which we enroll them in we see to it that they are given um, exposure of the varied vocations that are available that they understand these opportunities which are there beyond just commerce uh, science and arts 
it's not just that you can have to be a commerce student you can easily be something else like maybe an uh, interior designer maybe you can be just a chef maybe you can be a teacher but for all of this uh, uh mindsets have to change and you know ch children have to inculcate the values and the understanding and which is what we do at grades 8 you know 6 7 standard onwards secondary years onwards we um give them uh, uh workshop we give them you know learning year year or year on learnings uh, which are based on uh, social emotional learning which are based on uh, knowing your vocation vocation and uh, uh, you know, going to field, having field visits to understand what the vocation is all about, and um, exposure to uh, things like Trinity speech and drama, which I don't think any of those children would ever think of, uh, debates, uh, mock UN sessions, uh, uh, so you know, to, so that they can start opening up their minds and can fit in uh, to the so called so called privileged children, you know, when they can fit in with them, when they get into college, because college is, college life is very different. It's not uh, uh, so cocooned and uh, the way it is for their school life. And um, yeah, so SAC does, SAC does a lot of holistic learning, whether it is even in, even in sports, um, we try and give them as much of exposure as we can uh, in sports, arts, uh, theater, uh, fine arts. So yeah, like a like a privileged child, the way I would give my child the opportunities of learning, SAC tries and gives the same opportunities of learning, whether it is a girl child or it is a you know, a boy child, uh, showing no in inequality at that level. So bringing all the genders to one level. Uh, trying to, uh, you know, uh, trying to negate as many um, issues that uh, financial finances would cause in learning. Um, yeah, uh, basically, I hope I hope that answers that question. <laughs> So like, as we have read already, and like you mentioned, it's more about experiential and skill based learning, not just academics. Correct. Correct. So that that's mm. that's actually going to develop a child then uh, from those who are just bookworms. Absolutely, absolutely. Because if you are going to learn, suppose you do a small experiment. That learning, the visual learning that comes when you are doing doing something, it stays with you for a very long time. I mean, even if you are thinking of it on a later stage, uh, you will know how many ye kiya tha. You know, this is what I had done. This is how I experienced it. So. Going into fields to learn what a vocation is, is again an experiential learning. Giving them a role, role play uh, of situations where, you know, suppose, um, go figure out, we, we send them to their communities to figure out what the problems are and how they will solve the problem, which is also a part of their learning. So again, this becomes very experiential. Uh, we do innovation clubs with them, you know, where they are doing product designing from scratch, where uh, they're learning to use waste material to make products. Uh, they are uh, learning to bring in electronic circuits, make it, you know, bring it together to uh, make uh, things like uh, uh, infrared sensors for, you know, blind walking sticks. It means it opens up their mind and it also teaches them a lot of uh, a lot of their regular math, science, um, English uh, skills, which are very, uh, very important, very necessary at that time. Very important. Yeah. So, uh, experiential learning plays a very uh, plays a huge role uh, in our curriculum. Uh, we want them to learn and retain what they have they have learned so we, we also have as in maths uh, how do you make it experiential so we try and have these uh, market days where they are given you know these monopoly money coupons and uh, they have to buy they have to uh, they have to you know kind of uh, budget as to what i will pick up and of course their toys and uh, books and stuff which they can take back home so they have to buy they we put discounts and so they have to do their mental math to kind of uh, figure okay uh, okay this has got a 20% discount that means 
you know so yeah experiential learning makes a lot of difference i mean it 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 uh, it helps in building skills yes so like not just aiding them uh, with education you know just uh, it's like making them individuals who can become their own backbones so not just providing them with learning aids correct 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 backbones and yeah. more more of more as in suppose you are a backbone today for yourself you know you can support five others of Absolutely. your community under you so why not why not give them i mean this is what i would teach my child and then none of my sac children you know uh, 250 children yes at juhu but uh, overall sac supports with their in school in uh, in school uh, in uh, bmc in school support we support around around 800 children that's great man so across our centers we are we are a good huge group of children today this year for my grade 11 i have 35 children who have walked into grade 11 and i am thinking um that if every year i am going to be from slowly from 10 we became 20 from 20 children in grade 11 now i become 35 children in grade 11 and that means if 35 children every year if i am going to get that that number and if every year we are able to uh, channelize them in the right a uh, sphere of uh, vocation or even education the new made lives for as many and they will also influence lives if not uh, uh, you know one is to one is to 10 but at least one is to one ratio and that makes the whole change that changes the whole uh, economy the whole balance it brings it to a stable you know a stable level where people can work in unison so yes yes like what you're saying they can be backbones for themselves and they hold it back yeah. so like ma'am you have mentioned uh, there are you know we are just breaking down the socio economic strata it doesn't really matter so like education should be equal for all and that's a basic human right which i also believe so Absolutely. there are several children in your organizations who are coming from low income groups and people who have absolutely no educational formal educational background so what is their approach like when they listen about sac when they listen about spark a change foundation or when you are approaching them so how do they treat sac what is their point of view and how are, what is their first impression about the organization so um i think the first initial time that we went out to tell children you know that we have started a tutorial where you can come and you can learn um and it is free i think that was the first time that we actually went out to reach out to the community and after that the community has always come to us the kids have come to ask whether they can have their admissions and they can study with us because you know word of mouth uh, has done far more to our uh, has added far more to our cause than uh, just going around and asking you know children to come so we've only done that once the first year that we had to and you know the it is a spread of the uh, spread of the uh, goodness maybe that we do for, by our beneficiaries to other children that have made them come to spark a change foundation knowing i think they've observed how children are learning much more than what the schools are teaching how they are being able to grow beyond just education how uh, uh, how we are trying to build a life for them so they are you know our regular our uh, beneficiaries have been with us for the past 6 years uh, some have been for a little more but past 6 years the beneficiaries that have been they have the gratitude which uh, which comes across we can see the change in them um so i think they they, they have a good uh, and uh, a good opinion about our organization and <laughs> that they know and have the belief and they trust us with their uh, children uh, that they know that we will make we will get them to be somebody at least you know in uh, make them independent so i think yes uh, beneficiary families have that kind of trust in us yes definitely ma'am and how has been your journey so far with you know in all these months with spark a change foundation and what have been the achievements of the organizations that you would like to share with us 
So uh, over these years, our achievements, I mean, when we, I was kind of trying to put things together, I realized that we have, uh, we have a student who is becoming a teacher. We have children who are already uh, aiming for uh, becoming CAs and bank officials. And uh, I have one student who is going to be, uh, you know, hopefully playing the baseball IPL if they, you know, whenever it comes across. And uh, he's a state level player. We have, uh, we have, we have a choreographer in making. We have. Uh, uh, we have a chef who is ready and waiting for the institute at uh, Dada to open up and you know he's a, he wants to, he's been, has interned and uh, wants to study. So I think we have been able to achieve what we've set out, you know, you know, set out to do as give the children the, uh, a plethora of vocations and tell them go, go, go for it. Uh, and we are here to support you at every step till you are independent. And uh, many of them have learned to be, learned to do a part-time job and try and pay up for their education. And uh, that, that, you know, it is a good, feel good uh, moment because uh, you know that you have not, they are not, uh, you know, wasting them, themselves. They are trying to make the most of what their skills are, skill levels are, whether it is photography or it is, uh, you know, uh, blogging. I mean, children are learning. Children are, um, they are uh, kind of uh, becoming more like butterflies. Uh, so, yes, we, uh, those are our many achievements. And, uh, as to what it has brought me, I think uh, Spark Change Foundation gives me, you know, the beneficiaries, the children. It's uh, it's a very happy feel. Uh, you feel content with what you have. You know that uh, you can smile through all troubles because that's exactly what they do. And you know, if you smile through all your troubles, I mean, when you're walking down the end, uh, walking down the dark tunnel, you know, you will reach the end and you will be high spirited. So I see these children and I, I see them come and I see them bubbling with uh, happiness, no matter what, what's happening back at home. Um, and they want to learn. So I think the learning should be lifelong. And maybe uh, uh, we should not at any age, you know, close our doors to learning. You're always learning. So I am learning from them how to be happy, how to be content with what I have, uh, not ask for much more than I, <laughs> than I need. Uh, and uh, yeah, they teach me how to bloom, how to just may, uh, adapt to changes. Uh, yes, so that's what they, it has brought me. And then, has given me a that, lot is, of, that is your takeaway from the organization in all these years and months. Correct, correct, correct. Yes. <laughs> so, like listening to all this, I can just say it's not just about creating individuals, but also it's it's kind of a national service as well because we are contributing youth, such trained, qualified, skilled youth and children. As you know, great people have said that uh, students of today's generation will be futures of uh, the nation tomorrow. Absolutely. So. It, it, I feel this is one of the greatest achievements uh, Spark a Change Foundation has had and it's a privilege for y'all as well. So ma'am, um, moving ahead, like there are 60 active volunteers who are working with Spark a Change Foundation and so many children, as you said, so many mentors and uh, qualified and overqualified uh, faculty over there. Like uh, you are a multi-talented and a multi-skilled uh, professional out there. So what motivates these volunteers, these faculty members uh, working and you know training these students at Spark a Change Foundation. So uh, you know the uh, for vo a volunteer when it come when she or he comes to teach, uh, the primary aim is to try and make a difference. And I think uh, over the years when they see the child, you know, coming when it has come in the whole viewpoint of the child changing, um, uh, showing a positive response to. Uh, what they are teaching or they're trying to imbibe. I think that is the most satisfying uh, experience that our volunteers take back. 
and uh, that is something i think teaching is teaching is what the satisfaction that you have in teaching is something which is unbeatable across any job and especially something which you are doing without expecting anything back and when you receive a lot of warmth affection love and you see the child developing slowly you know into an individual that you are proud to uh, kind of look up and say you know i have done something to uh, you know make him blossom i think that's that's the reasons why a reason why our volunteers stick with us you know they uh, understand they are in sync with every uh, uh, every give that sack wants to make and that keeps them with us for you know keeps them uh, connected with us for all these years so of course yes it's best told best told by them as to why you know why the volunteers and how they are, what are their uh, experience and uh, what makes them stick back with us but uh, yes i think this is it is it is the satisfaction it is the happiness to see the child uh, you know it's like how you see your children grow up and you know you feel like oh i'm so proud that i've been able to bring up my child so well and that's exactly what happens when you are mentoring these children there's a connect which you can't negate i mean it is uh, it, it is um, it's a beautiful connect between a child and a mentor and it is like your own child so when you're bringing and you're molding him or uh, her you feel you, you know when you see them bloom it's some it's a takeaway which you can't uh, which none can compare to <laughs> so the observing the entire process uh, of the child developing and uh, you know being a witness to that uh, development and that evolution that the child has in itself correct so that is the main takeaway glad to know that ma'am and like i had also read about the covid relief that uh, spark a change foundation had conducted where there there were uh, relief hampers and all given to the daily wagers mostly so how did that contributed to the students families or to um, the daily wagers during the covid pandemic time so during the covid the covid just struck us struck us i mean it and it left us absolutely ma'am thinking what are we going to do and especially for a daily wager when uh, you know when you're taking away his uh, daily uh, uh, daily job which is going to be running his family uh, running the day for the family um it is it came hard uh but what we try to do is uh, for all our beneficiaries since march 2020 um we have supported them with uh, essential kits which include a monthly ration that can support for for a for a family of four uh, a hygiene kits which are required um and i think it has at least been able to allow them to make a couple of other ends meet whatever they may be these little ones of the savings that they may have may have had so uh, at least they did not have to worry about food on the plate they did not have to worry about the book the child has to write in you know they didn't have to worry about uh, um, education missing of education because we try to uh, you know we have gone online ever since april uh and for all the children who could not have a device especially the grade 8 up 8 and up we've tried to provide devices it could be second hand devices laptops that we had uh with new phones tablets we you know we uh, phone recharges the data recharge is required we've tried to facilitate as much as we could so that lives could be easy for them and uh, we will still till you know they are uh, uh, they are they are independent or they are you know they say yes now we are okay to go which i think in another month or two they should be perfectly fine so yeah but our covid our uh, beneficiary families did go through a lot of issues um, we tried to use it as much as we could that is really great ma'am and uh, i have also there has been times where i have seen that people who are taking up such responsibilities you know even when they are in uniform they still 
you know sometimes they fail to meet those parameters and coming you know out of their comfort zone but again there are people like you and spark change foundation who are not wearing uniforms but still into the national and social service so that's really great of you and uh, of the well being that you are thinking of the well being and uh, welfare of your society that's really great ma'am um for the final question ma'am i would love to ask you what has been your mantra throughout that keeps you motivated and your message for the youth how can the youth of the current generation and the individuals make a change for the social cause so that the barriers of inequal education comes to an end so for the youth uh, i have just one if one youth uh, can mentor a peer across the levels um then you see what happens is one you build a friendship you understand you have you know you have the empathy uh, not only do they understand your issues but you can also understand the issues of a low income uh, group children so a youth from one from the privileged and the underprivileged if they can come together and you know the privileged can mentor the one from the underprivileged there is one a lot of learning that goes through uh both are both are equally learning in this process it makes you have a society which is well knitted because then you are not looking down on them nor are you nor they are looking up you are walking shoulder to shoulder which is very very important right now because india is one of the india is a country with the highest youth population and for us for us to have that youth to work in unison is very important for the not only for uh, a, a mental uh, a good happiness uh, a healthy uh, environment and ambience of the country but also for the economy i mean together you all can do so much you know um, you all can really pull things out uh, of um, the lows and bring it up to the highs but for that all levels have to work together and like a jigsaw puzzle uh, all have to be indispensable you can't have you know they are dispensable so i think uh, if one youth can mentor one youth across a level um, i think you all will uh, achieve i think it, that should be a bucket list that i have mentored or i have been there or you know and i'm sure you all i'm sure the each Uh, uh, both sides will learn learn a lot it will yeah keep you all grounded <laughs> and not only that it will help the country do better too absolutely ma'am that i believe that you know like you said india holds nearly 16 to 17% of the world youth and with that regards india a nation can be the most developed country if we absolutely. all work in sync and in perfect frequencies so it was a pleasure talking to you ma'am thank you so much for your time and yeah, i thank you so much thank you ma'am and i congratulate I you for answer well answer your questions properly though absolutely ma'am in fact like there were several questions that got answered in one so it was <laughs> really uh, skill of you and uh, thank you so much ma'am i really congratulate spark change foundation and you for all the achievements that that you all have made so far and the contributions you have made to the society also i would uh, wish you best of luck so that you can continue and you know with more enthusiasm for your future endeavors ma'am and thank you sir uh, another request to our dear viewers please uh, get on to the common dev app for uh, updates and for the activities we do thank you so much thank you so much for having us ma'am thank you very much